Hey you! Having problems with your 3D prints? Are you confused about all the license settings? Don't worry, I will show you the one parameter you can change to upgrade your printing skills. Stay until the end to see how. Hello everyone, how are you doing? My name is Julia and this will be the first video of a new series about resin 3D printing. In this video, we'll talk about the UV light exposure of 3D printers. This is the most important parameter we must provide attention to. So, we will show you how we set up and get excellent results with the standard desktop printers on the market. We can learn a lot from our mistakes. But not to waste material and time, there are some simple tests we can make to find the best configuration for your printer. Be it DLP, LCD or MSLA technology. There are many factors that can influence resin 3D printing, such as ambient temperature, resin type, fat status, platform leveling, and even quality USB can make a difference. Although we don't talk about these points in this video, you can assess our Facebook community or our Discord server, where there are countless discussions about 3D printing and an active community with people from all over the world always helping each other and finding ways to make the hobby more simple, accessible and cheap. So, let's talk about the topic of this video, UV light exposure time. For those who don't know, the resin used in 3D printing solidifies in contact with UV light, materializing layer by layer from our STL file until the part is finished. There are two parameters related to UV light exposure time. The exposition base helps to ensure better adhesion in the first layers between the resin and the platform. In this parameter, we selected a much higher exposure time and how many layers will be considered with more exposure. Increasing this time too much can end up generating failures so we must reach a number that does not make it difficult to remove the piece after printing, but that guarantees its permanence on the platform during printing. The other parameter related to UV light exposure is the time that the light turns on for each layer that must be specific and otherwise we can have two types of problems when the exposure is higher or lower than it should, of course. But what happens if time is too short is that the resin ends up not solidifying completely and failure should probably occur. If you end up not seeing anything on the platform, just the supports without the piece itself or even flaws in parts of the print, don't panic. In this case, the correct thing to do is increase the exposure time to find the ideal minimum settings. On the other hand, if the time is too high, you will be able to print, but compared to a piece with ideal exposure time, you will notice it will not have precise details. It will look a little blurry. You will probably have more difficulty removing the supports and consequently more work on finishing. The correct thing then is to find the ideal time for your printer, according to the resin you are using and the layer height you selected. Even if your friend has a printer just like yours, there may be variation and that's why we will show you how to make simple exposure tests that will help you quickly and without wasting a lot of material to find this time correctly. There are a lot of tests out there, we've selected two of them. One with a faster printing time and another famous one that gives you more visual information on the detail levels of your print. You can choose between them according to your needs. To represent how each setting would look when printing our minis, we'll also use this miniature, a Lutz freebie from the sci-fi subscription, the Cyberpug. So, we can show you how to read the results of the printed test pieces. We put the links in the description so you can easily download all the models that we decided to use. Ok, so let's see how to do it. In order to configure your tests, you must open your favorite slicer. Today, we will use Shito Box, but it could be others like Lichi, Photon Workshop, or Prusa Slicer. Inside these programs, you should find the Settings tab, which normally has the bottom layer exposition and the layer exposition. The other parameters can be left at the manufacturer's default values, 
as we haven't shown what they are for yet. And with these standards, you'll probably be okay. Here, inside the slicing program, we must also select the printer model we are going to use. In this video, we will use four AnyCubic monoprinters to perform this test simultaneously and show you the results. Then, we will import the three models we selected for testing. Here, at Loot, we use a layer height of 0.05 mm or 50 microns as a standard, which guarantees excellent quality to the naked eye. We will talk more about this parameter and its possibilities in another video, but we must remember that the UV light exposure time we are setting is related to the layer height used. If you increase it to 0.1 mm or 100 microns, the UV light time will be longer because the layer thickness is higher. If you decrease it to 0.03 mm or 30 microns, for example, the time should be shorter because the layer is thinner and demands less light to solidify. The base exposure time can vary a lot from printer to printer, but on average, it's between 20 and 80 seconds. Of course, this parameter requires tests to check if after printing it's easy enough to remove the part from the build plate with a spatula. On these AnyCubic printers, we use 55 seconds. But if the piece is peeling from the platform, even though you know the platform leveling is correct, you can increase the base exposure time. If after printing you find it too hard to remove, you can decrease it by 5 seconds until you get a satisfying removing process. We must also select how many layers we want to have with this long exposure, which on average is between 2 to 6 layers. In the slicer, we have the main parameter, the UV light exposure time. To start, you can use times provided by the resin manufacturers. Mono printers have a shorter time, but if you have an RGB printer, each layer can take much longer. In order not to get too frustrated with failures and have parts stuck in a fab, you can start with time considerably longer and go down according to your tests. To show you the difference between the tests, we did it with four different exposure times on our printers. 0.5 seconds, 1, 2 and 3 seconds, but we already know that our ideal time is 1 second. So, we have 1 test with lower exposure, 2 tests with higher exposure and 1 with the ideal time that will serve as a comparison between them. After printing, we have to clean it with alcohol to remove the liquid resin that remains on the printed pieces. Let the alcohol evaporate and only then we will be able to see all the details of the pieces. In these tests, they are more visual, we don't need to do the final curve to read the results. But if you're going to do a fit test like this one, it's necessary so your result will be accurate. Among these two tests, the easiest to interpret is this flat piece with some details and we must pay attention to the central part initially, which will show us whether the time is high or low. For a perfect result, you should see if the tips of these drops are touching perfectly. If they are separated, it means that the time is low. If they are overlapping each other, the exposure time is high. As simple as that. Another area we are interested in is this small text just below, which should allow an easy read. If the letters are blurry, you can know that the time is still high. So, just decrease or increase the exposure time of the layers according to your tests. And you can do this by one second initially, but it's also possible to make fine adjustments with fractions of a second. For example, we use 1.45 on the Mono X Photon Printer. Ok, regarding the other details on the test, at the end of the day, you may still have flaws mainly in those made up of very thin parts, like these lines and small dots. But don't worry, focus on these two areas that we've talked about, and consequently, the rest should be fine. The other models we printed have similar functions. 
this model is well known and it's also possible to adjust the exposure knowing how to read the model but basically we have here high and low relief details, thin pillars, printing angles and lots of super small details but the result we should get is a piece with a higher sharpness and flawless which we will ensure that your final pieces come out with the highest quality possible. Well, now that we know how to read these parameters, let's see how the Cyberpug, a very small miniature, looks like in each test and what the difference we can see. The first test just failed. This is the one with 0.5 seconds of exposure time. It's clear that the time was low because just the base layers was printed. Look at this. The one with one second will be a perfect print. Now, comparing it to the 0.5 seconds, you can see how it had to look like. Now, comparing with the 3 seconds test, you can see that most of the supports were very thick and some even joined between them and with the model, which would make a nightmare to finish. You might think the problem is just with how the supports were made but the details are also blurred due to high exposure. This also happens with the two seconds test, but it's hard to identify. In this case, we can even think that we printed a piece with good quality, but what we should find is the shorter exposure time to UV light without generating failures. In the 75mm piece, we can see the same difference between blurry details and thicker supports and although it's easier to remove them, they leave more marks on the surface. When you find the ideal setup and take off the supports, it should be an easy, super satisfying experience. Just like this. So, what do you think? Was it possible to understand how to configure your 3D printer according to your resin and layer height? We make all of our models manually pre-supported, testing the supports, printing all the parts until it's perfect, so that you have a better experience. But there are still several factors that can influence the success or failure of your piece. And that's why we want to know what are the main subjects you want to see in this 3D printing video series? Leave a comment below. Oh, and if you click on the like button, it will give us information so we can know if this kind of content helps you or not. Of course, if you are not subscribed, take the time to check our channel. We made a lot of videos, from painting tutorials and 3D modeling time lapses to this kind of content you've just watched, aimed at this universe of 3D printing and tabletop games. Also, stay tuned so you don't miss the next video. We will pass through a new parameter, this time showing the difference between layer heights. I'll be waiting for you in the next video. Bye bye!